Previously on the Corgenix World Strongest Man, in one of the toughest qualifying groups ever assembled, four-time champion Brian Shaw proved his dominance and automatically advanced to the final after five events. In the first ever last man standing competition, despite his amazing performance, Slovenia's Matias Belshuk was unable to beat Canada's JF Carone for the group's second spot. Now, Group 2 begins their quest. Five-time podium finisher half-door Julius Bjornsson has the will and determination to make his way to the top. But last year's newcomer, Martin Slitsis, will be at his heels, not making the battle for that coveted final spot easy. Who will emerge as the leader? The competition continues now. Welcome to the African nation of Botswana for the ultimate test in strength athletics. The Corgenics World's Strongest Man. This year, the capital city of Habaroni is hosting the event where qualifying group two begins their quest for the final. Here at Botswana's Parliament Plaza, they will take on the Load and Drag. Friends, in the Load and Drag event, the strong men will need both athleticism and power as they'll have 75 seconds to carry two NFL linebacker-sized sacks to a platform 10 meters away. And then the fun begins, where they'll drag a 683-pound cart as far as possible. Let's get started. The first three athletes have made their way to the start Ladies line. Britain, first up, Luke Stoltman of Great Britain, 6'2", 326 pounds. From Canada, Jimmy Puckett. Canada's Jimmy Paquette stands at 5'11", weighs in at 271. From Bulgaria, Dimitar And Bulgaria's Dimitar Sabatino. His third appearance at World's Strongest Man. And you see the crowd greeting him. They have been awesome throughout our time in Africa. So, Dimitar Sabatino off near lane. Jimmy Paquette of Canada, middle lane. Luke Stoltman in the far lane. They're on to the second sack. And you see Sabatinov there really struggling to get that first sack loaded up onto the table. He's only five foot nine inches. Whoa! We see Jimmy Paquette there losing his balance. We saw Mark Felix do that early in the competition. This is a new event that is giving some of these strong men that are new to the sport some challenges. Man, Sabatinov really struggling. Meantime, in the lead in that far lane, Luke Stoltman. Stoltman doing a nice job of getting that part moving on this brick, uneven surface here in Botswana. No easy task, but he seems to have the right technique that's helping him out. Dragging a metal crate down brick cannot be easy, and they run out of time here. The winner of Heat 1, because of distance, will be Luke Stoltman, and he worked up a pretty good sweat right there, getting two sacks and dragging it 6.43 meters. This crowd in Botswana has been great, but it was that efficient vertical bunny hop technique combined with explosive power that proved to be the perfect combination for Stolten. Lane one from Iceland, please welcome The next three Stephen athletes Solvi are getting Peterson. ready to compete. Iceland's Stefan Salvi Peterson. From the United States, Martins Lisi. Martins Lisi is from the United States, making his second World's Strongest Man appearance. And making his seventh appearance, Iceland's half Thor Julius Bjornsson. Half Thor in the near lane here has made the podium five times, but has yet to get that top spot and take home the championship. Leeds in the middle, 17 off in the far lane. Half Thor Julius Bjornsson, former basketball player, really showing you how that athleticism can help him here. In the far lane is Hafthor's fellow countryman, Stefan Salvi Peterson. His first appearance here since 2011. He's happy to be back, but it's Hafthor who's setting the pace. He's doing a beautiful job. You see Martins Lietzis in the second lane there. Only 309 pounds. Had a great rookie debut a year ago. A great rookie debut it was with Martins making it all the way to the final. A huge feat for a first timer. 30 seconds. Afthor still has about 30 seconds to pull it behind that line. You would be the only man of the six competitors of Group 2 
to finish if he can drag the cart on, across the line in time. Come on, Come on, Still yes. working, and he does. Ten With 10 seconds to spare, Hafthor gets it done. See, Leachy's there in that middle lane, showing you his heart determination, but just doesn't have enough. Give a big hand for the winner of this group. So the winner of the load and drag of group two is Hafthor Julius Bjornsson. Yeah, he looked determined and impressive from beginning to end as he heave hoed his way one step closer to his first ever championship. Bjornsson becomes the early leader, being the only competitor to complete the course. Leedsy's also came out strong, pulling the mining cart an impressive 7.52 meters. Moving to the Grand Palm Hotel and Casino where the athletes of Group 2 took on their second event, the Squat Lift. I was expecting a hard fight on Squat with Thor, Liches, myself. A 700 pound Squat for me is pretty much routine weight. Seven hundred pounds squat at world's strongest man. I don't understand why some athletes are struggling with this weight. This should be routine for everybody here. I think that a lot of it comes from lack of mobility, not strength. All these guys are brutally strong, but they're lazy on their stretches. So when we have to squat that low, suddenly these guys get uncomfortable and lose their balance. Flexibility and mobility is just as important as strength. Misha, did you find his neck? <laughs> Nine is good, but I was expecting more than one or two guys to be up there with me. Hafthor well, is almost 40, 50 kilos heavier than me, and there I am beating him on the squat. So it's not about who's the biggest, it's about who's the strongest. I just decided before the squat, I was going to take third place to save my energy, so I'll be as fresh as possible to win the title. It's amazing having my lady Becca here. My energy, my strength has just tripled. Not being the absolute biggest as far as weight goes, we have to come into it with the most strategic planning. Stay tight, stay tight! I was just thinking, balance, don't rush, keep my abs drawn down and make sure that I'm just settled. He is so on top of the analytical side of lifting. Mortis and Jimmy, they're both very strong. I know my strength as well, you know, I'm feeling quite comfortable. Second place for me in this group is more than satisfying, you know. I needed something like this after yesterday's performance. What is your favorite part of being involved in the strongman competition? Being around the strongest people in the world and beating them. Martins Leetzis dominated the squat lift with 11 reps. No other athlete was even close. Paquette came in second with nine and Thor with five. Peterson and Sabatinov unable to get even one rep. With this win, it brings Leetzis to the top of the leaderboard. Hafthor has fallen to second, just one point behind Leetzis. The rest of the field has a lot of work to do to catch up. Competition continues here at Haberoni's Grand Palm Hotel and Casino with the third event, the bus pull. The time limit is one minute. The weight of this bus, 33,000 pounds. And the course length is 25 meters. Five men have already competed. One of them being Great Britain's Luke Stoltman. Trouble at the very end. Just pulling the bus short of the finish line, he was able to get a 24.12 meter. Also, the 
American Martins League. Second trip to World's Strongest Man. And unfortunately for the Americans, struggled quite a bit in this event. Only managed to pull the bus 21.08 meters. Standing so far, Stoltman the current leader, Paquette in second, Leeds in third. None of the athletes have managed to finish the course. One athlete remains, and that is half Thor Julius Bjornsson. Representing Iceland, we have half Thor Julius Bjornsson. 6'9, 437. He's in second after two events. Take the strain. Are you ready? Yeah, you hear that big growl at the front. It's almost like he's a locomotive that slowly starts to build up steam and momentum as he goes along. The 437 pound Icelandic behemoth doing a really good job moving this 33,000 pound bus right out of the gate. He's the six time Iceland's strongest man champ. Three time European champ. Former basketball player, got some athleticism to him, but power is what he's known for. That's like a slam dunk right there, Aaron. And he is proud of that. 3501, he completes the course. He's the only man to do it, and he wins the bus pull. If only getting to the top of the podium were as easy as this bus pull, Hathor Julius Bjornsson would be a happy camper. Elliot. Bjornsson and Leetsies have been playing a game of leapfrog, fighting for first place. Bjornsson currently in the lead, but Leetsies only two points back. Stoltman has a lot of ground to make up to have any chance of the automatic advancement to the final. The athletes headed to the Baharuzzi Cultural Lodge just outside of Haberoni for their fourth event, the Axle Press. The Axle Press. 162 kilos. Lift! The problem with the axle press is so that you can't get your hands around the bar. What we're doing is we're basically deadlifting it off the floor, cutting it all clean up into our belly, and then cleaning it up to our chest and then pressing. So you've got to make sure you keep that breath in and then press it. Pressing's pretty good for me at the moment. So I got the first rep up, it felt quite nice, with a nice pop to it. And I went straight into the second one. Cleaned it up quite nice and I popped it and I saw the ref, I won't mention his name. Uh, I thought I got the down signal, but uh, that's the first time I've lost my cool, but hey, it's life. I suppose it was the nature of the beast, you know, we all want to do as well as we can. Thor's looking awesome. He's got his own solar system going around him. I have to think about the finals. I want to be as fresh as possible so I can do my best there. So right here, I'm trying to not push as hard, trying to save a little bit of energy. So I was happy with three reps. I was going to go to tie with him. I thought I was done, but everyone's like, well, do more. And I look over to Hafta, and I'm like, well, how many does he have? And I heard three, so I'm like, well, I'll try for another. But then he went from it. So I did as well. In practice, I could, I have gotten five or six reps easy. So I knew I had it in me. So right, I was going and it hit the bar, hit my chest. I heard a But the moment I heard that, I just threw the weight down because I, I knew I was already in second. It was like right in the sternum. I think you just cracked it. You, you'll take a big breath? Yeah. Racing Haftor for first, I could have hurt myself. I was like, stop! Huh? You guys don't need to do more. I don't want to say I'm worried. Not at all. Good. What's up, buddy? Agnes for Magnuson. I feel the power seeping through this shoulder, through the rest of my body. And now I can do anything!
Sorensen pulling off his second straight win, getting four reps. Lisi's is close in second with three. Sabatinov will have to withdraw due to injury. With this win, Bjornsson has nearly solidified his automatic advancement to the final after the next event. Three points back, it would take a miracle for Leeds to overtake Hafthor, but he wants to stay in this prime position. And this year, there are a few changes to the format of the event. There certainly are. After this upcoming fifth event, the leader in the standings will advance automatically to the final. Typically, the man in sixth place would be eliminated, but with the loss of Sabatinov, all of our remaining competitors will face off in the winner-take-all, last man standing. But first, the athletes must take on that fifth event here in front of Cali Hill, the Bullion Toss. And whether you're throwing kegs or bullion, our strongmen will need to find the sweet spot between power and trajectory as they attempt to throw eight bars ranging from 39 to 55 pounds over a 15 and a half foot wall in just 60 seconds. Two athletes have already competed. First up, Stefan Solby Peterson throws the first couple here with ease, and then you see him start to struggle a little bit. Bottom line, he's having a great time out there, and that is for certain. Managed to get six bars over. Next up was the Canadian, Jimmy Paquette. Almost got hit right here off the bat, you're gonna see on the replay, and it's dangerous. Struggle getting these bullions over. Only managed four bars and obviously was not pleased as he walked off the course. Representing Great Britain, Luke Stoltman! Great Britain's Luke Stoltman. Ready! And we'll see what he can come up with here in the bullion toss. If he does well here, he could certainly climb the ladder. So far, so good. Relative ease to this point. Those are clearing the bar by quite a wide margin. They are, you see him trying to get the crowd fired up. That last bar barely made it over the wall. That was the 50 pounder. And right here, oh, gets rejected. I just like the relationship he's got. He in the crowd, he's asking them if they want one more, and they're going to respond. The crowd in Botswana has been great here. All of the competitors have enjoyed them and actually used them as an asset to help them accomplish things just like that. Six bars, and the shirt comes off from Stoltman. He gets six to move into second in a time of 49.59. Well, we talked about the need for power and trajectory. You see Stoltman explode through, little bit limited with his overhead extension, but has just enough to get that bar over. And you'd be jumping for joy too if you put on the performance Stoltman just did. Two athletes remain now, United beginning States, with the American, Lizzie. Martins Litsis. Pound for pound, there may not be a stronger competitor in this competition than Leetzies. He'll have enough power to get these bars over, but it's his technique I'm concerned about. And didn't have the right trajectory there. He certainly didn't. But that bar cleared the top of the wall by three or four feet, but because he chose a poor angle, he paid dearly for it there, having to waste precious energy. And he comes up short on that one. Just doesn't quite Keep your grip on it. have the necessary rhythm and spacing, it seems like. Yeah, and it looks like he's got oh, some limited range of motion in his man. shoulders finish as well. I know he works really hard at that, but this 44-pound gold bar really giving him problems. Perfect example of how these guys, you can be phenomenal Ten in seconds. one event, on. and then the next one just doesn't fit your strengths. We're seeing that case in point from Leedsies, and you can see his frustration. No doubt, and that's much more a factor of his inexperience than anything else. Two bars in 2102, he moves into four. You see a little bit of tight hips, and he kind of rolls out to the outer edges of his feet, and he loses the solid base necessary to be successful. Up next, the giant from Iceland. Half-door Julius Bjornsson. Leader after four events. He's had a challenging time arriving here with Bell's palsy. 
and he needs just one to secure a spot in the final. He did so easily, and there's another one over. He needed one, he got that one, and then some. And he's into the final for the seventh straight year. The crowd loves it, and he's asking if they want one more. And they certainly do. Hathor Julius Bjornsson, certainly no stranger to entertainment and kind of bringing the crowd into it. It's clear he enjoys this sport. Yeah, he's obviously an actor, plays the mountain in Game of Thrones, and he just put together a mountainous effort right there. So explosive and so powerful, and with his height, he makes this look easy. After five events, he has already wrapped up the group. One point separates Leetzies from Stolman. Leetzies will get the top seed in the last man standing event. We're here at the foot of Haberoni's Cali Hill, where the second finalist will be determined in the all decisive last man standing event. This event is proving to be a fun watch as the four remaining athletes will compete for one spot in the final. Now they're seated upon the standings after five events and each must lift a 352 pound stone over the bar. When an athlete's eliminated, the next highest seed enters. Have fun with that, boys. All right, first up was Jimmy Paquette and Stefan Salvi Peterson. If you're starting it this early, you got to take it in stages, because if you look at the whole big thing, it's going to be too daunting. Yeah, certainly. And for Paquette, who's only 5'11", that bar is a lot higher than it is for the 6'5 Peterson. Man versus man, winner take all. And at this point, Peterson just checked out of the event. He ran out of gas after eight lifts. So then Luke Stolman jumped into the fray to take on Paquette. And Stolman's a powerful and prideful competitor. I would expect him to do well, and he certainly did. Let's see what Paquette from Quebec City can bring to the table as he tries to get that 352-pound stone up, but it proves too much. So Paquette knocked out Peterson. Stolman knocked out Paquette. Leeds sees the highest seed jumps in to take on Stolman who had only lifted it two times. Don't forget, Hathor Julius Thornton has already earned his way to the final and gets to sit out the event and watch. And I would expect a heck of a battle between these two evenly matched competitors here. It's huge for Stoltman that he had only lifted it twice prior to Leetzies jumping in. So they're almost on even footing starting it. Very, very closely situated, these two. Stoltman's going to need all that extra power and then some because leetzie has been disappointed pretty much with his performance thus far, not having near the success that he did in year one as a rookie, as you see his girlfriend there cheering him on from the side. Those guys using a lot of tacky that's stuck on their shirts and their forearms and their hands and then stuck to the Atlas Stone. One rule is when you drop it over, it has to fall, similar to tennis, within the white line. So you can't push it so that a guy has to take steps over to the side to pick it back up. Yeah, with new events, competitors are always looking for ways to give themselves advantages. So these rules that are set in place really help to level the playing field. I love this event. I love the format and I love the fact that two of the best in the business are going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now. You can see these two go. Leetzie's looking very focused. It looks like Stoltman's starting to puff and puff a little bit. Remember, working muscles gobble up oxygen three times as quickly as resting muscles, and Stoltman's looking gassed right now. But he's trying to re-energize himself, and he's certainly getting help from the crowd. Leetzies is more fresh because he was the last man to jump in. Leetzies is attacking that 352-pound stone with a vengeance, volleying after every time Luke Stoltman tries to return his serve. And that's it for Stoltman. He lifted it eight times before he was done. A total of ten, and the fresher man Leetzies wins. Having lifted it nine times, a Leetzies type celebration. And he makes it to the final for the second time. Going back to his rookie year of last year, the American awfully impressive.
when Leeds is confident and saying that things are easy, he's starting to feel good and get his swag and mojo back. And I think that mojo and swag will carry him through the rest of this competition like he was carrying those boulders over the bar. Lee Tees again of the U.S. He'll join Hafthor Julius Bjornsson in the Corgenics World's Strongest Man Final. A great showing by Stoltman, but he'll have to wait until next year. Four athletes have found their way into the Corgenics World's Strongest Man Final. Only six spots remain. Tune in next time when Group 3 begins their quest. 2016's fourth place finisher, the Georgian Bull, Konstantin Janashia. We'll battle against Great Britain's Lawrence Chalet in six more epic feats of strength. For Aaron Taylor and our entire crew, I'm Brent Stover. This has been a presentation of IMG Original Content.